Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. All right, so let's talk about the difference between EPS, extra pyramidal symptoms, and MS, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, malignant hyperthermia, and serotonin syndrome. The reason why I pick all four of these is because either they're caused by the same drug or they present very similarly and you need to know what causes it. So extrapyramidal symptoms are caused by antipsychotics and by antiemetics, antiemetics. So antipsychotics, what drugs are we concerned about? Haloperidol, risperidone, zeprisidone, olanzapine, clozapine. Extrapyramidal symptoms are caused by antipsychotics and antiemetics. And the antiemetic that they like to test on the most is metoclopramide, which is Reglan. So what is extrapyramidal symptoms? We use the mnemonic ADAPT. So AD stands for acute dystonia. The second A in ADAPT is akathisia. The P is pseudo-Parkinsonian and the T is tardive dyskinesia. So acute dystonia, akathisia, pseudoparkinsonian, and tardive dyskinesia, adapt. Acute dystonia, four hours, akathisia, four days, pseudoparkinsonian, four weeks, tardive dyskinesia, four months. Obviously that's not the exact time frame that that will happen, but it's an easy way to remember. Four hours, four days, four weeks, four months, adapt. Acute dystonia, akathisia, Pseudoparkinsonian tardive dyskinesia, all caused by antipsychotics like haloperidol or antiemetics like metoclopramide. So what do we need to know about these four, how they present? Acute dystonia, acute, obviously that four-hour onset, dys meaning trouble or issues with, and tone, dystonia. So you're having issues with tone or trouble with the tone of your muscles, which is the one that they like to ask about the most is torticoilus. So your side of your neck contracts. You got this dystonia in the side of your neck and it is contracting you one way. Four hour onset. Four days akathisia. This is restlessness. They cannot sit still. They're fidgety. Four weeks pseudoparkinsonian. So similar to what you would see with Parkinson's disease. Facial grimacing, pill rolling, tremor. At four months, Tardive dyskinesia, so it's late onset, tardive, tardy, four months, dyskinesia is trouble with movement. We don't need to know the treatment for the sake of the boards. What we need to know is that if this person is on antipsychotics, that this person can develop this extra pyramidal symptoms and present with one of these depending on the time frame and depending on the way that they present. So identifying that it can be caused by an antipsychotic or an antiemetic, haloperidol, metoclopramide, your four hours, four days, four weeks, four months, adapt, acute dystonia, akathisia, pseudoparkinsonian, tardive dyskinesia. The next one, neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome. This person is gonna present with fever, 104 to 105, altered mental status, muscle rigidity, and this is caused by antipsychotics. So you can see that antipsychotics can cause extrapyramidal symptoms in that four hour, four day, four week, four month, 
or it can cause neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which presents in a more acute setting, but they develop fever of 104 to 105, altered mental status, muscle rigidity. They can then go into rhabdomyolysis because of the muscle rigidity. And remember, with rhabdomyolysis, the rhabdomyoles of the muscle are being lysed. Muscle is made by what? Protein. Those proteins are going to now clog the glomeruli and cause us to go into acute renal failure. And the treatment for this is dantrolene. So antipsychotics can cause two different things. Now, EPS is an actual movement disorder or muscle disorder. These other ones are now causing fever, altered mental status, muscle rigidity, different in presentation, still caused by the same drug. This NCLEX High Yield Podcast is brought to you by Immunacy. I-M-M-U-N-A-C-Y. Immunacy.com. Immunacy is an immune system booster formulated by doctors and pharmacists. This team of MDs, PharmDs, DOs, and PhDs have put together a proprietary formula with the highest quality ingredients to keep you in your best health. All natural, gluten-free, zero sugar, vegan, no GMOs, and fully bioavailable. Stock up now to keep your immune system at its best. Immunacy is now available at immunacy.com. Check them out. And now, back to the podcast. Malignant hyperthermia. So neuroleptic malignant syndrome has malignant in it. Malignant hyperthermia has malignant in it. They both present similarly. So fever, 104-105. Altered mental status. Muscle rigidity, same thing. Rhabdomyolysis, same thing. However, this is caused by inhaled anesthetics. This reaction is congenital. That means you have a gene that predisposes you to developing malignant hyperthermia when you're exposed to an inhaled anesthetic. So what are the boards like asking here? When somebody's getting ready to go into surgery, you're going to ask them if they have a family history of any type of a reaction to anesthesia. It's not under psych, but it presents the same exact way as neuroleptic malignant syndrome. They both have the same fever, the same altered mental status, the same muscle rigidity. So the boards will try to trick you between neuroleptic malignant syndrome and malignant hyperthermia. That's why we throw it in here. They both have the word malignant in it. They both present the exact same way. So being able to differentiate them is very important. One's caused by an antipsychotic. One is a congenital predisposition to an adverse reaction to inhaled anesthetics. And then serotonin syndrome is with SSRIs. We got to be careful of consuming over-the-counter St. John's wort. We want to be careful of introducing a different type of an antidepressant too quickly without giving them enough time to get rid of the um, SSRI out of their system. So giving them an MAOI or giving them a TCA, whatever it is, you can throw them into serotonin syndrome and everything becomes hyper. The brain is hyper, seizures, altered mental status, confusion, hallucinations. If the heart is hyper, tachycardia, hypertension. If the skin is hyper, diaphoretic. If the muscles are hyper, they're contracted and rigid. Everything becomes hyper. If, you're, if your reflexes are hyper, hyperreflexia, everything becomes hyper in the body. That's the difference between EPS, NMS, malignant hyperthermia, and serotonin syndrome. Again, two of them are caused by antipsychotics, EPS and NMS. NMS and malignant hyperthermia present the same and both have the word malignant in it, but are caused by two different things, one antipsychotics and one by inhaled anesthetics. And then serotonin syndrome is caused by psych medications as well too, usually a drug-drug interaction. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth, and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.